Hello everybody and I appreciate you watching RV Travel Buddy. Today's video to me is urgent. This is a follow-up from a video I did a few weeks ago about rattlesnake baits in the desert. Today I had the privilege of doing an interview with a doctor at Palisades Veterinary Hospital and they truly gave us an in-depth uh, review of what the vaccine does for your pets and also talks about the other issues like heartworm and also some of the other critters we have down here. So today's video is going to be a little long but I urge you to watch the whole thing. It could save your pet's life. I want to thank you for watching. You know how much we love our pets. I know how much you love your pets. Please take the time to watch this interview. And once again, thank you to the Palisades Veterinary Hospital. They were very kind and very informative. Thank you. Today I have the pleasure of talking to Dia Hessian from Palisades Veterinary Hospital, is that right? And we're in Fountain Hills. And Cinder is here getting examination and we didn't think she'd come up on the table, but she did it all by herself. <laughs> is this a spoiled dog or what? And today I wanted to talk to a doctor about the rattlesnake vaccine and there's some myths that go along with this, so hopefully we can clarify some of this. Now we're doing this as a courtesy to all the folks coming down here, especially our deers or snowbirds <laughs> coming down here. And Cinder's going to get her booster shot today, and we'll show that later. But anyway, uh, we're going to let Cinder do her thing so you'll hear some sounds. And uh, please just be patient with her. We are in a little, <laughs> a little room. So. Anyway, so uh, I wanted to ask you, first of all, what is the rattlesnake rex vaccine? So the rattlesnake vaccine was developed about 10 years ago. It's been out for quite some time. It works by stimulating the pet's own immune system to develop antibodies, which are the organisms that help fight off infections, similar to other vaccines that you get. But it tries to, stim it tries to stimulate antibodies that help bind the toxin that the snake injects at the time of a bite. And so by binding the toxin, we can reduce, hopefully, the side effects of the bite and also um, buy us a little more time between when we're bit and when we seek medical care. Gotcha. So one of the myths is it's like sometimes people think a vaccine is a keeps you from getting hurt. So what I want to make sure people understand is when a dog gets bitten, um, it doesn't mean not to take them into the hospital. Correct. So um, even if your pet has been vaccinated with the rattlesnake vaccine, you do still want to seek medical care. And we do still give antivenom to treat these guys. Uh -huh. um, we do still give these guys antivenom to treat them. The, um, what we are hoping is that the amount of antivenom and the effects from the bite will be reduced because of giving this vaccine. Now typically when they get bit too, they also get an antibiotic a lot of times too, is that true? It really depends. Um, it depends on the bite, the location of the bite, and um, complicating factors. So antibiotics are not always given. Okay, gotcha. So um, just to uh, make sure, it's, even if we get the vaccine, uh, it's critical we still get the pet into an emergency. It is still critical that you do have your pet seat. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, for, for the Fountain Hills area, is my understanding is about three clinics that are 24-7 that are emergency hospitals for pets. Is that correct? So in Fountain Hills, we do not have a 24-hour emergency facility. The closest 24-hour emergency facilities, if you're located in Fountain Hill, is going to be at um, Paradise Valley Emergency Clinic, which is at Scottsdale Road and Shea. Gotcha. The next is at um, Animal Emergency, or Blue Pearl is their new name, and they're at Scottsdale Road and Acoma. And then if you go down the B line, we're going to be looking at VCA Emergency, which is on Country Club and Mesa Road. It's gotcha. the old Mesa Veterinary so, Hospital. Uh, one of the things is like, like not all RVers come to this area, but it, it, I would say it's definitely a good recommendation to make sure that as soon as you get into the area, 
to be aware of where the 24-7 clinics are? Yes, it is a good yes. idea. Um, we have brochures. Clients can come in if they want to get brochures from one of the emergency facilities. We have those so that they can have that at the ready. Great. So um, typically, uh, uh, you were telling me earlier this, uh, uh, whether you have a big dog or a little dog, how um, how is the vaccine administered? So the vaccination is a sub-Q, which is under the skin vaccine. It's given in large breed dogs. It's given once um, at the initial series. So this is the first time the dog is receiving the vaccine. It's given once, and then it's boosted in four weeks. And then it's given every six months. For the larger dogs. In the larger dogs. In the smaller dogs, it's given their initial series is not two, but three vaccines. So they're given three vaccines, and then they go to the every six month booster as well. Wow, that's interesting. So what's the uh, general cost of the vaccine? It uh, depends, you know, certainly it's gonna vary from hospital to hospital, um, but their range is usually 40 to $60 for gotcha. the vaccine. So uh, I heard, uh, I, I was gonna ask you, is the, Anti-venom is very expensive if a dog does get bit. Unfortunately, yes. And so anti-venom has fluctuated over the years and it really depends on the supply. It's the same anti-venom that they're using in human hospitals, so many times we're competing with human hospitals for the product. Oh, wow. Anti-venom can vary anywhere from $500 to $1,000 per vial. Wow. And it's not just the cost of the anti-venom, it's the cost of the fluids, the hospitalization, the monitoring. Um, we uh, do need to monitor these guys for swelling and local tissue death from the bite. We also do worry about um, clotting problems, and that's the biggest concern we have with snake bite dogs that have been bitten by snakes, is we're monitoring their clotting times and we're not monitoring their proteins. Yeah. Um, so there is addition, there's, there's treatment in addition to that $500 to $1,000 antivenom. Gotcha. So, one of the things uh, I know we talk about on uh, RV Talk Radio is when you bring, come down here to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. And even in, and uh, we just had in Fountain Hills, right in our dog park, a dog got bit. And that's what kind of motivated these shows. And uh, so, would you agree? <laughs> Vigilance is the Oh, first I think idea. vigilance is yeah. anywhere. Um, you know, the Sonoran Desert is unique. We have a lot of desert dangers that. Um, that people really aren't used to uh, being exposed to. Yeah. Uh, between our snakes, which do come out in the early spring, uh, and will are still out until it starts getting pretty cold. They don't hibernate usually until October, November. Um, we do have to worry about our other wildlife between the coyotes, yeah. the javelina, yeah. um, the bobcats, and then we do worry about our birds of prey, especially for our small breed. Small breed pets, our dogs and cats. Roadrunners could be a problem, aren't they? Um, roadrunners are carnivores, but I'll be honest with you, we don't. Um, I don't think I've ever had a roadrunner attack. So. <laughs> I heard they're aggressive birds. The other uh, animal I want to ask you about was uh, the desert frogs. Right. What so Colorado they? river toads are commonly called bufos. Uh -huh. They come out during our monsoon season. I think that's when their breeding season. I'm not a herpetologist, so I can't tell you. Yeah. But they do, ex um, when they're stressed or handled, they excrete a toxin in their skin. They have glands on their skin. And that does cause, um, can cause um, the dogs to develop heart arrhythmias <laughs> and um, can make them very ill, and we have had some dogs die from it. Wow. So certainly, and I've seen those frogs a lot. So. Right, and a Creorius dog's going to want to go over there, and the first thing yeah. they do is stick their nose on and then lick them. And so prompt uh, emergency treatment is immediately washing their mouths out with water uh -huh. and then getting them into your um, closest veterinary hospital. Uh -huh. When you wash their mouth out, remember to point the hose out of their mouth because <laughs> some people want to point the hose down their mouth and the next thing we have is an aspiration pneumonia because these dogs have swallowed too much water. So yeah. you want to rinse out, not yes. rinse in. And you know, when you're in a panic situation, you just got to keep a clear head. Right. Yeah. So, the last thing I wanted to kind of bring out is we're talking about vigilance, but down here, like a lot of us, I'm from Washington, so we don't have the critters like we, you guys have down here. So one of the things that I always tell people is you got to be responsible with your pets and making sure you pick up after your pets. And there's people that will literally avoid that and, and let their dogs run free in lots and in the desert so they don't have to pick up after their pets. And that's where I think you're going to find all these critters. 
And so I just want to, I think you probably would agree that being uh, vigilant and being responsible will probably keep our pets alive. Being responsible, being vigilant does, does um, equal a happier, healthier pet, and happier, healthier usually means longer lived. Yeah, and I think leash. that, right, and I think that there are groups of people that don't have pets, and um, those people that don't pick up after their pets kind of ruin it for the rest of us who do have our pets and want to take our pets places and they've been told they can't because other people haven't picked up their dog dirt. So, yeah. you know, we, we just need to realize there is a small population of people that aren't pet friendly. We feel sorry for them, yeah. but, um, uh, but we do need to be cognizant that maybe they, that, that for us to be able to take our pets the way we, where we want to we need to be realistic and under and, and watchful on what our pets are doing and clean up after. So anyhow, uh, and I want to thank you folks so much for allowing us to interview uh, everybody here. The, the staff here is fantastic. Thank so you get a chance to come to this particular. I, this is my favorite uh, animal clinic, and uh, Cinder is always comfortable here. <laughs> I have never been able to get Cinder to lay the table. She <laughs> realizes she's been being filmed, yeah. and since I understand yeah. she's the mascot of the show, she feels that she should be in during the entire filming she's episode. She's never done this, so I'm so proud of her. She's being so good. Um, and, and I want to make sure if you want the opportunity for us that are kind of ignorant, and I am one of them, what are some of the biggest uh, advice you'd like to give folks like us that's coming down to the desert? Uh, with our pets? I, you know, certainly it's to realize your environment, make sure that you're watching out for these critters and real and and um, realizing that there are preventative measures like the rattlesnake vaccine. You can also have your dog snake avoidance go through snake avoidance training and that's going to be the, the okay. ultimate the ultimate treatment is get the vaccine in case they get bit, do your snake avoidance training so hopefully they don't ever get bit. Um, we're big believers in um, heartworm prevention. We do have heartworm in this area. It's low compared to maybe down in Houston and the, the Gulf states. But unfortunately, with the migration of people from those areas, our area has been, our mosquito population has slowly gotten infected. So we do recommend heartworm prevention when your pet's down here. Not only does it protect your pet against heartworm, it's also going to protect you and your pet against intestinal parasites. Most importantly, roundworms, which are something that we can get and then people can cause blindness. Wow. So it's a simple procedure of giving your pet heartworm preventative once a month to protect them as well as yourself. Um, and the Cinder, other, Cinder gets all those treatments. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, the other thing is we strongly recommend, you know, some people do not want to do vaccines. They don't want to do all the vaccines that are recommended. They want to reduce the frequency of their vaccines. Certainly we understand and respect that. But we do feel that all pets that are seven years of age and under should be looked at by their doctor once a year. Just like you get a physical, your pet should get a physical. So we can note weight changes, um, lumps and bumps, and start tracking those things. Once they become over seven or considered a senior, then we really should be having your pet come in twice a year because we want to do preventative care. We want to catch these things early and treat them before they become uh, critical life life ending type situation. Right. That's super. So uh, we're going to wrap this up uh, for the interview. And once again, thank you so much. You're welcome. And Cinder, you've been a great stunt dog. Cinder's been a great mascot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Cinder's actually here to get her booster for the rattlesnake vaccine, which has been six months since uh, we did the program. And so we're glad. And we've had absolutely uh, no issues with the shot at all. She's never even been sick or sleepy or anything. So the after effects were nothing with her. Right, and unfortunately in some dogs we can have an after effect. The most common reaction is that they can get a swelling about five days after the vaccine and it has to do with the carrying agent yeah. and the vaccine. And it's usually, a little bit yeah, here. they'll get a sterile abscess. They usually just need um, hot pack treatment. Occasionally we will use antibiotics. But that's been the extent of reaction that we've seen with this vaccine. All righty, well, I'm going to wrap this up. I want to thank you once again. This You're is welcome. a group from uh, Palisades Veterinary Hospital. I want to make sure I say it right. Fountain Hills, super people. We've been here several times with all of our pets. Treated us well, educated us well, 
and I feel secure that we we're taking care of our pets properly. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.